Hi folks, today we're going to talk about how to change your reverse osmosis filters. It's a real simple job, it takes you oh, 15 minutes tops um, once you've done it uh, before, once you become comfortable with it. The first time that I did mine last year, it probably took me 30 minutes because I had to read my manual and make sure that I was doing everything correctly. But let's go through some of the parts and how to change these filters. So um, mine's a three-stage filter here with a membrane at the top. Membrane you want to replace about every three years. These three filters down here at the bottom, I'd recommend doing those once a year. And here's how I'm going to pull my light. Notice how, this, is the, this is the old filter right here. Notice how gray it is. And this is about 14 months. And so when you get the new filter, the new filter will be just as as white as this cover is right here. Um, so you can see how gray that got in 14 months. So let's do this. Let's here's let's pan into the tank back here. Here's your reservoir tank. And I'm gonna set this light down. I'm gonna grab a pointer because I want to draw your attention down towards the bottom of the tank. And I pulled off my little blue cover and set it here. But I want to draw your attention to this uh, Schrader valve right here. It's the same type of valve that you have on a bicycle um, uh, tube. And um, you'll utilize your um, air pressure gauge because you want to keep between 6 and 10 pounds of air pressure in this tank, in this reservoir tank. Because in the reservoir tank, there is a, a floating membrane up at the top and um, you want to keep between 6 and 10 pounds of pressure so it keeps that membrane down on top of the water and then as your, your, your water pressure um, or your water begins to refill the tank it'll push that membrane back up. So um, 6 to 10 pounds on the Schrader valve here. Use a bicycle pump tire. Don't use your air compressor because you may blow the blow the tank or the membrane. But let's do this. Take note of what um, brand that you have and if you don't have your owner's manual you can sure find one online. And so let's go through this real quick here. So grab my pointer. I'm going to come all the way back to the back of the sink. It's going to be a little bit hard to see. But here's my sh water shutoff valve, my cold water shutoff valve right here. And so you just turn that to the right and that will um, shut off your water supply to the unit itself. Now here's another homeowner tip. What I do twice a year, I crawl underneath my sinks, my toilets, and I turn my shutoff valves off and on, off and on, off and on, three, four times, just to keep them loose. Because down here in Arizona, we have very hard water, and most people will, once the plumber puts in your sink or your toilet, most people just ignore those. And what happens is if you don't, twice a year, turn them off and on, off and on, off and on to keep them loose and, and free flowing, if you develop a water leak, you will not be able to turn off your water for that particular um, plumbing fixture. Now, while we're talking about plumbing fixtures, I do want to bring your attention my my water lines are steel jacketed they're braided i didn't cheap out and just buy the regular rubber ones and here is why um every about five six years you should replace your water lines because they will break but if you're trying to save a dollar when you are replacing your water lines and you just buy the cheap plain old rubber ones those once they develop a little pinhole that pinhole will expand and um, very quickly and um, turn into a major, major leak. The beauty of these braided lines is if they develop a pinhole, that steel jacketing um, surrounding the rubber tube keeps that pinhole from developing into a very large free-flowing leak so it will minimize the water damage you have. So there's two homeowner tips for you right there. Now I'm going to pan out right here. This is my unit and at the very top I think I mentioned that we've got a membrane up here. Um, replace this every other time that you replace the filters. And so the filters are real easy to change once you've got your water supply turned off. Here's my spanner wrench right here. I just lift the unit up 
and from the bottom bring my spanner wrench up and then um, loosen it now what I did is I got my spanner wrench on and um, I just gave some some taps with my hand on the spanner wrench just tap 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 um, to give it a little nudge to start the, the loosening process so once you insert the new filter and of course this is an old one um, this canister will be filled full of water so when you when you're loosening it make sure you keep the canister upright and then when you get the canister unscrewed keep it upright to not spill any water um, new filter goes in and into the canister and then the canister comes up and then you screw it back on and then use your spanner wrench to give it one last little uh, you don't want to tighten it too much. We're not putting lug nuts on the car, remember, because um, you're going to need to get it off next year. But there's an O-ring up here that keeps it from leaking, and you'll see that once you get the cover off. So once you get all three replaced, you turn your water supply back on, and make sure that you have between three, or excuse me, six and ten pounds of pressure in your tank, and you should be good to go. Now I am going to do one little plug. I'm going to pan down here. This is what I just paid. For all three of those filters just uh, about 48 bucks and here is who I purchased those filters from I go to these guys instead of one of your big box stores because these guys sell these units and they're real knowledgeable about it and they have all the proper filters what these guys are going to need to know is your brand and the model number and if you can't find a model number written um, on your unit anywhere take a picture of it because these guys right here have mock-ups in their lobby of all of the water filters and um, they are a great help there's some guy that um, his desk must be just right outside the customer service door because twice when I've gone in there over the years to pick up new filters he comes out he hears me talking to the um, receptionist or customer service agent in the lobby and, and he hears the questions I'm asking so he's come out from behind the curtain so to speak and he has just been a wealth of information I don't know what his name is but real nice guy he takes you over to the mock-ups and he explains everything you need to do what each device does and so on so uh, Mariflow Water Systems on 115 West First Avenue in Mesa so thanks for watching